Hey everyone, welcome to my LG E8 OLED TV review. What can I say about this OLED that I haven't said about OLEDs in the past? That's kind of my challenge here. And if you've seen any of my reviews in the past, you know that I'm a big fan of OLED TV technology. I think that it provides the most pure cinematic picture quality that you can get these days, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right TV type for you. We're gonna dig into that a little bit. What's different for this 2018 OLED is that it's got more smarts. It's a bit faster than it was before, better processing. It's got a new design, new audio system. And we should also address an issue that's been talked about quite a bit lately online, burn-in. Is that really a thing? Do you have to worry about it? And also, is this TV gonna be bright enough for you if you watch TV during the day with you know, all the windows open and sunlight pouring in? All that and more coming right up. All right, so let's talk about the design of the television. The E8 series differentiates itself from LG's other OLEDs, mostly in the stand. We've got a nice little piece of glass along the bottom here, along with a relatively small footprint stand that juts out from the center, as you see. Just above that, this little black strip here is the speaker system. I'll talk about how that sounds in a minute. Otherwise, it's about what you would expect. It's super thin up top and just a little bit of a bump out at the bottom where they hold all the hardware. And of course, that's where all of your inputs are. Plenty of 4K HDR capable HDMI inputs on this television. It's got the same remote, and yes, it still does the magic motion thing. You wave it around like a wand, and you can use the pointer to navigate through LG's WebOS system, which I still love. I think it's really well laid out. I think it works extremely intuitively. And of course, the controls here are off the charts. You can get super granular. There's an ISF bright room mode, an ISF dark room mode, cinema, cinema home. We also have a Technicolor mode, uh, in which Technicolor has come through and made very specific color settings. And I I will go ahead and say right out of the box, the color is extremely, extremely good. You can get it just a little bit better if you hire a professional calibrator, but I just don't think most of you are gonna need to do that. So under the hood, there is a brand new processor from LG. Uh, this provides a couple of different benefits. First of all, navigating this TV is extremely quick. You're never waiting for apps to load. They almost immediately load up. Uh, your content starts streaming almost immediately as well. Uh, you can zip through this extremely quickly. Uh, really don't have time for laggy smart TV systems like Android TV. So this is always a breath of fresh air for me. Also, WebOS is just laid out really well. It's easy to find what you want to watch. That processor also benefits the picture quality in general. Calibrators, as I mentioned before, can get extremely granular with calibrating this TV. There's a 3D lookup table for you uh, super geeks out there that can be taken advantage of. But generally speaking, the picture quality is as excellent as it's ever been. Uh, right out of the box, this TV just looks amazing. And that, again, the narrative here is people who come through and look at this TV just fall in love with it. It has a very approachable, lovable picture. Those perfect blacks really make the contrast pop. 4K HDR, HDR10, or Dolby Vision look absolutely stunning on this TV. The YouTube content that we're using here for display <laughs> is some of the best streaming stuff out there. And of course, Netflix, Amazon, and Vudu also look excellent as well. One of my favorite things about this TV is that it lets you know exactly exactly what kind of content you're watching. When you start something that's in Dolby Vision, a Dolby Vision sign pops up. If it's standard HDR10, an HDR sign pops up. So you know exactly what you're getting when you sit down to watch. There's never any question. I mentioned earlier that LG's TVs are smarter than in years past. How is that the case? Well, LG's implemented ThinQ, an AI and deep learning system that is supposed to offer better search results and help you control your stuff better. It works with the Google Assistant so that if a LG TV can't handle your request, the Google Assistant should be able to do it for you. The idea is that searching and getting information is supposed to be easier. So let's see if that works out in real life. Let's check out how it helps you find content. Show me Chris Hemsworth movies. It'll show us a bunch of results and you'll know right at the top here, there's little icons showing you what services will make these movies available. I wasn't aware he was in Star Trek. That's news to me. If we'll click that, uh, we'll get to a place where we can see how much it's gonna cost at these various services. Looks like I can watch it for free with a subscription at Hulu, uh, or I could click on Amazon Prime and we'll find out how much it's gonna charge me to rent or buy the movie. Uh, we can also switch inputs. Switch to channel two. Now LG is able to take a look at your entire program guide as well. So if you just wanna watch a particular show, you can ask for that. 
when is Jeopardy on? And it'll show me uh, exactly when Jeopardy is on and I can actually have it switch uh, or remind me when that particular show comes on. It's also smart about what's connected to the TV uh, to a certain extent. So switch to game console. It's smart enough to know when it is connected to a game console. We currently have a PlayStation 4 connected. It's also going to automatically switch into game mode, which is going to reduce lag and boost brightness. Google Assistant will actually jump in and help answer follow-up questions too. So let's go back to searching for a particular actor. Show me movies with Charlize Theron in them. How tall is she? How old is she? So it'll give me information I'm asking for without me having to specify I'm asking about Charlize Theron. That's the follow-up style. Now that we're getting comfortable talking to smart speakers, I suppose it makes sense to have this kind of functionality built into a television. I like the fact that I don't have to use a wake word. It's not always listening. I just press the button on the remote and then it starts listening. Of course, that also makes things less practical in some cases. For instance, I could uh, adjust the volume up and down with my voice, but why do that when I'm already holding the remote with the volume up and down buttons on it? I should also mention that you can control the TV with a Google Assistant speaker. However, that makes things a lot less intuitive. It's not nearly the sort of natural language thing that you just witnessed us trying here today. Overall, I think it's the best implementation of a smart assistant in a TV right now. Android TV built into Sony TVs can't compete, and Samsung's Bixby is all but useless. So, if you're interested in this kind of control, LG is doing it best right now. For those of you who hate finding your remote to turn on the sleep timer, uh, the TV can help you out with that as well. Turn the TV off when this show ends. And there we go. 55 minutes later, this TV will turn off. Now a note on sound quality. I mentioned earlier that the speaker strip is down along the bottom and it looks pretty thin, so you might be worried about getting thin sound. Anything but, man, this TV sounds big and robust. I believe it has some subwoofers hidden in the back. It sounds remarkably good for such a thin TV. You may be able to get away without a sound bar. All right, now let's address the issue of OLED screen burn-in. This is something that has sort of spread its way throughout the internet. I think it's causing some undue concern in some cases and, you know, genuine concern in others. So first of all, what is screen burn-in? Well, it's a misnomer. That's something that came from old CRT TVs where actual burn-in of the phosphors on the screen would happen. This is a little bit different. What's happening is if you have a static image like this CNN bug down at the bottom, and that image is there for long periods of time, for days on end, it'll actually wear the pixels out, certain elements within those organic pixels, so that it uh, leaves sort of a shadow when you watch other stuff. And that's not good. But here's the thing, it's actually kind of difficult to make that happen. If you're the sort of person who has CNN or Fox News, if that's your thing, on like eight hours a day, every single day, you just leave your TV on and it's constantly playing something like that, then yes, you're going to experience some screen burn-in. Also, if you're a gamer, you play the same game all day long, several days on end, every week, you're going to experience some burn-in wherever there's a static image. It is possible to do it. However, I and many people I know, including my own sister, have owned an OLED TV for over a year now and they have zero screen burn-in problems. So if you watch TV for a few hours a day and you change it up, you're not gonna have that problem. It's only for extreme cases where you may run into that issue. And if you fit into that category, yeah, you should look at an LCD LED TV instead. So should you get an OLED TV? Yeah, I think if you want the very best picture quality, super deep blacks, great HDR pop and contrast, an OLED TV is going to be one of the most satisfying experiences that you can get. Should you get an LG OLED TV? Yeah, I think LG does this extremely well. They play the perfect balance between super bright specular highlights and maintaining detail in both dark and bright areas. The color out of the box is nearly spot on. Should you get an LG E8 OLED TV? Well, you can get the same picture quality, the same smarts, the same WebOS system, the same processing in the C8 model, and that's quite a bit less. But if you like the premium features, the sound system in particular, as well as the stand design and the, uh, the glass at the bottom, 
then yes, I would say go for the E8. It's gonna be about $3,000 for a 55 inch and $4,000 for a 65 inch. Otherwise, you can go with the C8 and get the exact same picture quality and almost all the other features for a little bit less money. So the LG E8 OLED, another outstanding offer from LG. It stacks up extremely well to the competition. And I think for a cinephile and for purist, there really isn't a better choice on the market.